Has it really been a year already? It has. It's time for us to taste the Lapsang Shushang. Mead. After one year. Okay, so this is made from that tea that nobody can pronounce, but it's Lapsang Shushang. And it makes it kind of smoky, a little bacony. And this one came to 16%. Has a finishing gravity of 1.010. And it's been sitting for an entire year. But you know what? It's time for the pour can. Okay, clarity. Beautiful. Absolutely spotless clarity. Fantastic. Yeah. No haze, no nothing. It's got a great color. Yep. Everything about it looks really nice. I would call this golden rod. Yes. It smells a little like Lefroig. It does. It does, which probably makes Brian really happy. Um, well, I like Ardbeg better. I was going to say. But <laughs> it's, it's close. Um, That's crazy. It fits into that. Yeah, it smells it really does. peaty you, more than than smoky. Yeah, if you, well, that's because the, the PD is smoke, really. Yeah. But. Um, if you like PD scotch, this, this might be the way to go. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. I don't get a lot of honey on the smell. Right. And that's one of the things that I want to say at this point, before even tasting it, is that this was prior to our new... The don't give up method. Right. So <laughs> uh, the smell alone makes me think that I think we probably should have back sweetened this with more honey. Yeah, I mean it's a 1.010. Probably could have used more though uh, from the from the offset. So we'll find out as we uh, we go. I'm gonna give this a taste. Actually, that's not bad. I'm getting some citrusy fruity mm -hmm. notes that I didn't expect, and that's from the tea. Yeah. Because this is tea wine that's been smoked. Essentially. That's what I was thinking initially. It was like, wow, that citrus pop is really nice. It could use a little bit more sweetness in my opinion. Yeah, but I have vague memories that this was a little kind of Yeah, we tried this and... punchy before. And now I think all the different flavors it's interesting the smokiness doesn't come through as much in the flavor as it does in the aroma. Yeah, but it's like I don't feel like the flavors mellowed so much is that the the volumes if you will of each note leveled out so oh i see things well, that that's what been, mellowing is right but it doesn't feel like it's it's still got a lot going oh, it's, on yeah it's aggressive it's, it's got a lot going on this is aggressive uh, but they're playing nice it's more like a, a chord a harmony rather than a I'm glad this is 16% too, because the ethanol bite makes me think even more of scotch. Yeah, yeah, this is this is like a watered scotch. <laughs> it kind of is. What's weird is I tried some of this it, like six or eight months ago. <laughs> I didn't really like it much. This is okay. I mean, this is not a pour in a tankard and sit there and have with your favorite meal kind of meat. Mm -mm. Not at all. This is, like she said, this is more like having a scotch. You put this in a glass and you enjoy it over some time. Um, very different experience, completely different type of beverage. Yeah. So, yeah, this is like an interesting experience. It's, it is, it's, it's confusing. For me, it's actually pretty cool because before City Studying, Brian and I both really enjoyed scotch, like yep. really enjoyed the full spectrum of whiskey, oh, whiskeys. Yeah. but we both really liked scotch. Now, we, we had different areas of scotch that we preferred, but we both agreed that our bag was wonderful, uh, particularly the Ugadol expression. However, and Cal Ela, that one's for you, Adam. Yes, yes, that one was that's lovely. The twelve, in but particular. But now that I have matured and aged, ha uh, ha, whiskey in general kind of kicks me in the ass, and and it's it's sad for me because I used to really enjoy sharing mm -hmm. that appreciation with you, and you now, still have some now and then, but not much. Yeah, I can't really do it. So this. I feel like is oh this gives you kind of the same feeling without adjacent oh, okay so All right. I could probably enjoy a glass of this while you enjoy a glass of sure actual whiskey and we can have similar experiences absolutely a shared experience but I would say yeah this is kind of between Lefroig and Ardbeg and smoke it's not quite rubber band or um, band aid rubber it's more like um, hot leather armchair. <laughs> 
enjoy scotch. That probably sounds really odd. And but for those of those of you who do enjoy you know what scotch, I'm talking about. you probably know what we're talking about. And if you don't, go grab some scotch and then but yeah, this, let your memories go. This totally hits the notes of peated scotch, mm -hmm. which is very interesting because that's not what we were initially going for. We were going for bacon. It doesn't taste like bacon. Mm -mm. It doesn't taste like bacon at all. It but, doesn't taste like bacon. And I think the only way we could get it to taste like bacon is we would have to add additional flavors. And like, salt and stuff like that. Yeah. Like make maple syrup and brown sugar and mm -hmm. those kind of things. Which... You could do. We could do, sure. But that really wasn't our intent. No. The, the fact that it's, it's more scotch-like than bacon-like is actually... I'd say run with the scotch idea. Yeah. It's actually, I think, a better route. Yeah, but as a beverage. That's just my personal opinion. It is really interesting how the smoke comes through on the aroma. Yeah. Like, this is the kind of thing that you can sit there and smell it. But there's many scotches that you do that. You, you oh, smell God, yeah. and then you That's take a little what I sip like about and then it's just the combined experience. Again, back to that word experience, but that's really what it is. This isn't something that you just want to chug. Uh, th that that seems like a waste of time and effort. It, this is something that you want to enjoy, you want to savor, mm -hmm. you want to take your time with it. Just a, investigate all the different flavors. A quick journey on this one. As it goes into the mouth, it tastes sweeter than you expect, kind of like the way some scotches do. Now, you're going to hear a lot of references to scotch because this has a lot of similarities. It's a little sweeter than you expect. Then once it's in your mouth, that's when the, like a lemony orange citrus note is starting to hit. Um, but it's it's not super strong, it's not overly floral or fruity, but it's a little bit of it. And it hits along with the ethanol at the same time. So you get a bite and an acidic brightness at the same time, which makes you think scotch or whiskey. And on the finish, I get a little bit more of the smoke. It's a lot easier drinking than most scotches. Like if, yeah, if, yeah. if you don't, if you cannot do a smoky peaty scotch, you, you might be able to try this. Yeah. Um, because it's it's a lot more approachable than that. But as a mead goes, this is incredibly aggressive for a mead. Yeah. Um, probably more aggressive than most of the things we've made, other than say some spicy ones. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would want to interject is that for me, at the very beginning, just before the citrus comes in, I get a little bit of that rubber. S oh, okay. sensation that you get from lots of scotches. I've been drinking a lot of Isla Scotch lately, so it, it's just I'm like, probably more immune to it than she yeah, is. Yeah, so I just get like a little bit of what is that, and then it immediately goes okay. into citrus, and I can't pinpoint the citrus type because it kind yeah. of like flows into the full spectrum. So I say lemony orangey. Available citrus, yeah. It's kind of mandarin lemon. That's the easiest because it's it's yeah. got that sweet orange. It's not a regular orange. It's sweet orange with a bitter lemon kind of thing. It's hard to explain. Yeah. But what you're calling is the uh, the rubber tire band aid. I get as like a tanginess just before the citrus comes in. So to me, it's not so offensive. I guess would be a good <laughs> word. But I do. I see what you're talking about, and I get that more on the exhale now than I was getting it before. So. Overall, I'm kind of impressed with this. Yeah, I am much more pleased with this than I was anticipating I was going to be. Yeah. Based on my memories from the initial tasting. So, yay! <laughs> um, but now we have to put a number on this. We have to put a number, okay. I need more. Numbers take volume of drink. That sounded very caveman of me. Mm. Mm. You need more? Mm -mm. Here, yes. Mm -mm. You... Just, just another half a sip. That was yes in caveman. I was, yeah, I was going with the caveman. <laughs> um, I don't know that I would like this one chilled. Many meads I actually would enjoy chilled. Yeah, I feel This one like, I think would lose too much. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to put it on ice too because it reminds me of well, drinking, I mean. drinking whiskey on ice. I think it watered down. ice has watered it down already. And... The mouthfeel, initially, I get, oh, it's kind of watery. But then as mm. as it continues, it's not watery at all. It's just my brain, the it's very It's got initial... a good mouthfeel. It's yeah. not overly viscous because it's not overly sweet. If you sweeten yeah. this more, it'd probably be more viscous. Um, and that's the solution. If this is too strong of an aggressive flavor for you, sweeten it a little bit more. Yeah. 
and you might be able to appreciate it more. Um, I actually kind of like it the way it is. I wouldn't want to, I don't want to sweeten it anymore because then yeah. it would lose the, the effect that I think we're getting from it. Yep. That's just us. You can, it's your meat. You do how you want. This is true. Um, Numbers. Focus. Okay. I'm, our scoring system goes from one through 10 with 11 being a possibility if it's just super stupendous. One is kind of meh, ick, crap. You probably dump it. 10 is just an outstanding version, pretty much exactly what you were shooting for, or just came out surprisingly good. 11 is like those rare moments that are just a step above. The clouds part, the angels sing, you know, that sort of thing. I like to judge things as if someone handed me a glass of this and said, what do you think? And that's all they told me. That's how I like to judge things. And I would probably think that they handed me a cocktail if I was given this. Mm. That had like Isla Scotch, Scotch in it. Okay. Um, I don't get a ton of honey character from it. So to me, this is a hard one to rank. Because if I rank it like I'm thinking this is a Scotch, it's going to go kind of low. And if I'm ranking it as a mead, it's kind of weird. So It kind of reminds me that if you did a cocktail of opposing Scotch, like Glamorangy and Lafroig. Oh, God. Please don't mix those two together. <laughs> but you know, Glamorgi they're, they're good in their own. Has but... like the citrus, the strong yeah, citrus, a little bit. and then the four has. But the strong... I'm not getting the alcohol bite that I get from them. No, so it's no, not those at all. More... That's why I think cocktail. Sure. Like blend it down with something, like a lot of water even. But... <laughs> and I'm not making it sound great, but it, it's just one of those. It's a very odd beverage to try to actually yeah. judge. So keep that in mind when you hear my score. Are you ready? Mm. Yep. One, two, three, six. six point five. Yep. I was edging on seven, but seven to me means this is really good. And above seven is like amazing. This to me is okay. It's not my favorite. Yeah. If I'm in the mood for a scotch and didn't have any, I might try this. If I was in the mood to not get a lot of alcohol, but get a smoky type thing, I might try this. Sure. Um, I'm trying to see where it fits into my drinking schedule to see where, <laughs> where I put the numbers. You know <laughs> what I mean? Drinking schedule. Well, you know what I mean? Like, like, would I have this in the middle of the day? Would I have this at night? Would I have this by a fire? Would I have it with, a, with food? I don't know where this would fit. So that's why I couldn't go super high. I like it for what it is. Yeah. But it doesn't replace scotch for me and it doesn't replace some other meads for me. So that's why it couldn't go much higher than 6.5. Yeah. I mean, if if I was really into the Isla style scotches, then I might have, have, have ranked this higher because I, I do miss my whiskey tastings. And so this would probably be able to replace it. But Isla wasn't really my preferred scotch. Mm -hmm. So she would have a couple sips of it. And that was enough. Yeah, I was I was more of a Highland girl. So um... no, I think our scores were fair. Yeah. I, they were pretty close, too. Um, that says a lot, too. Yep. Um, so overall, this is worth making. And if you really like this, play with the, the flavorings a little bit. Yep. Oaking this might make it even better. Yep. Um, there's a lot of ways to improve on this one. And like we said, this was made before we did our make it perfect, you know, don't give up on it kind of process. So the fact that it was done that way and we just kind of had what we had and bottled it, it's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's not bad at all. If, you, would... if you like Lapsang Sushang tea, you probably will really like this mead. And I think it's worth making yes. to try out for one time. It yeah. was really, really simple. But uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.